today's a really exciting video because I'm doing the nursing Q&A that I've been talking about for ages now. It's finally happening. I'm answering your questions that I said in my previous video and some questions from Instagram as well and I'm going to answer them to the best of my ability so stay tuned to hear my answers to your questions. Okay, the first question is from YouTube and this is from Caden Hewlett. And they said that I have a coworker at Starbucks who is saving up to go to nursing school. Do you have any tips you could give her? So I would recommend, if at all possible, saving the majority that you earn. And I know this is really difficult, especially if you have to pay rent and things like that. But I was lucky enough to be able to live with my parents until I moved to uni. And this gave me the opportunity to be able to save what I um, earned before coming to uni. So the summer before I came to uni I worked in Canada and I worked on the summer camp for the whole summer, three months, and I saved absolutely everything I earned there to for my first year at uni. So that's definitely probably the best option but I know for some people that won't be viable and that's completely fine. I'd say just look at your spendings and see, or tell your friend to look at your spe her spendings and see what she thinks she could like cut back on. So she thinks maybe she goes for a lot of coffees, obviously she probably gets free coffees working in Starbucks, but if she goes for a lot of coffees, a lot of dinners out or cinema lots or things like that, maybe she could cut, cut back on that just before she goes to uni. Because uni is really expensive between rent and bills and spending money and you want to go out, you want to have a good time, but yet you want to save. So I would say, number one, try and live with parents if at all possible, but I know depending on people's ages and where they live and their family situation, that's not all that possible. Um, and number two, look at her spendings and see what she can save on that. Oh, this dust. See what she can save on that's not essential. So going out, dinner, coffee, cinema, things like that. So that would be my top tip. Okay, so question number two is another one from YouTube and this one's from Megan King. Thank you for asking. This question is, what placements have you done and are placements at Southampton Uni good? Do you get good experiences from them? So this is a really good question and I'll answer it now. So I have done a variety of placements at my time at Uni of Southampton. They've all given me different experiences some have been better than others i'm not gonna lie but overall i think i've gained a really good um knowledge base of different areas so i'll tell you where i've done my placements so my first placement was a gastro award um my second placement was um an oncology so cancer care specializing in radiotherapy that was really interesting and that's definitely where i think I want to work when I qualify, which is really exciting to know where you want to work when you qualify because so many people have no idea. My next placement after oncology was trauma and orthopaedics. The word I was on was an elective word, so it was people coming in for elective surgeries. So they weren't urgent, they were elective, so meaning if a person had, let's say, arthritis in their knees or hips for years and then they couldn't be fixed with any um, anything else, like injections or anything, then they have to come for a knee or hip replacement electively, and that's what the word specialised in. But then towards the end of that placement, we got a lot of um, traumas, so not elective, but emergency operations. So that was pre and post-op. And that was really interesting as well. And now currently I'm in the community um, and I'm with a team that responds to people in crisis. So it's people that, let's say, just discharge home from hospital with no package of care, no, no one at home to mind them, no food, no things. And they're left in this kind of crisis and that's where we step in and we kind of decide where they need to go so we may get um social services involved or a private package of care 
to enable people to stay at home. So kind of our whole aim in the community is to prevent hospital admissions. So really sick people, we're trying to keep them as home, at home for as long as possible, treat them at home if we can. There is often times where we try our very best to keep somebody at home and just because of how acutely unwell they are, we have to admit them into hospital, which is quite sad, especially when the person themselves wants to stay at home because you want to do your very best to keep them at home. Um, and that's all my placements I've done so far. So I've done four out of six. So yeah, I'm a two thirds of the way there. And it's scary, but it's exciting. And yeah, I'm excited for third year. I won't find out where my third year placements are until I finish this placement. So in about two weeks time, I should know where my third year placements are. And this is quite scary because these are placements which are 10 and 14 weeks long. And currently my longest placement has been eight weeks. So it is quite a jump, um, but I'm sure I'll be fine. And I'll keep you guys updated where I get allocated. So I hope that answered your question. And did I get good experience from them? Definitely. Even ones I didn't like as much, I gained really good experience on like how to deal with people, how to manage conflict, which I have videos on, so go check them out. Um, things like that, I've just learned a lot, even when they haven't been the most enjoyable. And to be honest, I've been very lucky with my placements and I've actually really enjoyed all of my placements compared to some people which have a really, really tough time. I definitely haven't had a tough time with any of my placements, so I'm super lucky. Thanks for your question again. Okay, another question, question number three from YouTube again. This is from ML on YouTube. And they said, hey Claire, another fab video. Thank you. What is the most advanced skill you've done whilst on placement? There's a few questions to this um, question. So I'll answer them one by one. So what is the most advanced skill you've done while whilst on placement? Um, I'd say my most advanced skill will probably be MI injections, so intramuscular injections. They're quite, di they're not difficult, but people are kind of scared of them. So probably them or subcut, uh, subcutaneous injections, taking out a chest strain, um, catheterizing someone. That was a good one to get done. Obviously with all of these were with supervision, of course. Um, taking out a chest strain, catheterizing, like advanced leg dressings. Yeah, probably any of them would be my most advanced skill. Okay, the next question within this question is, what do you want to do when you graduate? Any idea yet? So I kind of touched on this before, I'd love to go into oncology, I think. But now more and more I'm thinking of going into A&E, but I know people think that's crazy because I've never had a placement in A&E, but it really, really, really interests me. And um, my future plan is to probably stay in England for a year to a year and a half, get really good knowledge base and get my basic nursing skills down and then hopefully move to Sydney, Australia, which is really, really exciting. So I think when I graduate, I'll probably maybe end up in oncology or A&E, but my mind is saying A&E because I want to push myself as much as I can before I go to Australia. So I get the most skills possible and the most experience that will help me in Australia. And I think A&E will definitely give me that because it's, yeah, I think I just learned a crazy amount. So I hope that answers that question. The next one, what has, been your favorite placement so far? Um, definitely my oncology one, although I'm really enjoying the community one at the moment. I had a really tough time at the start, but it's all sorted now and I actually really, really enjoy caring for people in their homes and preventing them going into a hospital because obviously hospitals are a scary, nasty place to some people and sometimes people catch infections that they normally wouldn't catch at home. So keeping really sick people at home is something I'm actually quite passionate about. And was there a big jump from first year to second year in difficulty of the course? I would say yes, slightly. It's a bit more of a heavy workload, especially 
at the moment I'm on placement but I'm also studying for my acute care exam in May and also two acute care exams in May and also a drug calculations exam so this obviously is hard while I'm on placement because on my days off the last thing you want to be doing is going home and studying but that's what I'm having to do at the moment which does make it a little bit more difficult but overall I don't think the work has increase that much. I think my advice would be to stay on top of your work and as cliche as that sounds, I know I'm sorry, but if you stay on top of it then you don't have this like overwhelming like I don't know what to do, I'm struggling, I'm like gonna fail, all of this. So I think staying on top of your work makes it easier to do well and also yeah it's not as daunting when you get into second year because you kind of know your first year stuff and then it's just a building block so first year is kind of here second year is here and third year is here they all build on each other but if you have the basics correct so first year then second year is made easier if you have second year a good level of understanding and everything then third year is easier so it kind of all just works out like that so they're the questions I got on YouTube and thank you so much to everyone for asking them. Next I have some questions from Instagram. So my Instagram is linked in the first line of the description and I actually get quite a lot of DMs um, on Instagram which I love answering. So I've answered every one of these people on Instagram but I'm going to include the, them in the video because I think they might help you and they're quite interesting questions that I got asked so I'm going to answer these two if you don't mind. So the first one was, hey Claire, I'm a new student coming at University of Southampton as a PhD student and thought of living in Glenair Halls. I don't know anyone there. Is Halls good for PhD students? Is £1,000 per month enough to live there? Okay, so again, quite a few questions in one. Thank you for asking. So I lived in Glenair Halls in Southampton first year and I really, really enjoyed it. However, this person's asking about coming from a PhD student perspective. And in my halls, everyone was um, first year undergrad. So depending on what type of person you are, obviously that will probably affect your choice because if you know you're doing PhD and everyone else is first year undergrad, that might sway your decision a bit because obviously first year undergrad, everyone's going out partying all the time. While I don't think a PhD student does that as much, I could be wrong, but I've never done a PhD, obviously. But I think, I don't know, I think it would be a strange mix, but I think it could work depending on the kind of group of people you get. So I'd say go for it if Glen Eyre is the place you wanna live, and I definitely recommend Glen Eyre as being the best uni halls in my opinion, but I'm completely biased, so yeah, maybe don't take my advice on that part, but everyone that's stayed in Glen Eyre with me really, really enjoyed it. It's a really good sense of community and atmosphere, so that's why I loved it. And then, is £1,000 per month enough to live there? I am going to say yes, um, including rent that would leave you about £500 um, spending and I think that's plenty for a month. Um, in halls it's really good because your bills are included so you don't have to worry about added bills. Well now I'm in rented accommodation house and we have to pay bills which comes to over £50 a month which is crazy. So at least at least when you're in halls you don't have to pay bills so that kind of cuts the cost a little bit and I think And I think £1,000 would be plenty, including accommodation and spending money. Thank you for your question again. So this one is another one from Instagram, which I'll put on the screen now. And this one says, hi, just watched your YouTube video about the Uni of Southampton. I've been made an offer to study nursing. I have a few questions if you don't mind answering. And of course I replied and said, hey, no problem. Um, congratulations, anything, go ahead. 
and then they said, oh, thank you, well, I just wanted to know about accommodation, where's the best place to live with good atmosphere, as I like my nights out and want to be with social people. Also, I'm doing the dual masters nursing, so do you think it's possible to join a sports team alongside this? I've always wanted to do that, but feel nurse feel with nursing, I won't have the time. So I think I covered the first half of that question with the atmosphere and accommodation. I would recommend Glen Eyre because it has good community and atmosphere, I already mentioned that. So I'm gonna to answer the second question in this question, which I found really interesting. So it's saying she's doing the dual masters program, which is obviously um, integrated masters. So it's, you're doing, you're either doing children and adult or mental health and children's or something like that. So it's an integrated dual field course. I want to join a sports team but I'm worried I won't have the time so this is really interesting I think you always have the time to be honest as long as you make time it's easy to not feel like you have the time because it is quite busy but in the evenings there is time for you to relax and chill and things like that and instead of doing that some nights you can go and do your sports and join your society in, in first year I was in quite a few societies and now I do first aid and I also do Zumba now and again. So I think there definitely is time to join a sports team as long as you make the time for it and kind of carve out time in your week and just say, this is for hockey, I'm going to do this. It might get in the way, the only thing I'm gonna say is when you're on placement, it might get in the way, get in, out. Oh, get in the way slightly when you're on placement with matches on the weekends maybe and things like that or if your training overlaps with placement but a lot of placements are really accommodating to previous commitments you have so I'm sure that'll be fine just tell your mentor before you start and I'm sure they'll be really accommodating so I hope that answered that question I've answered you on Instagram as well but I thought I'd answer it again so this one is a really nice message from Instagram also. Hello Claire, I'm a second year nursing student from Surrey. I found your videos on YouTube. It's so interesting to see how the courses compare and you inspire me you inspire me to keep going on my bad days. Thank you so much. When I read this I was like I felt like crying. It's incredible getting messages like this. I've got to do my pharmacology exam in May. Do you have yours this year? So we actually don't have a pharmacology exam which is a bit crazy, I know. We do have, um, yeah, we don't even have a module on pharmacology, to be honest. We've had a few lectures on pharmacology, um, looking at how um, medication interact with the body and things like that. To be honest, when you don't have an exam on it, it is more difficult to study for it because it's, you don't really have something to work towards and people might think that's a bad attitude but it's just how life works. If you don't have an exam on it you're going to find it more difficult to study for it but I think overall we more learn pharmacology and medicine management and things like that when we're on placement so I think we're not missing out that much because we'll be learning on the job and definitely I've learned the most medications when I've been on placement not in lectures and things like that. Although we did cover some medications in lectures, I don't think I learned any of them there. I think that I all learned them in placement when I'm giving, when I'm administering them to patients. And if I don't know what one is, I look it up or I ask my mentor. And then when I find, especially some of the more unusual um, medications, such as like chemotherapy and things, when you're giving them to patients and you, Obviously I don't give chemotherapy, but when you're with your mentor and your mentor's giving them to patients, I find it sticks in your head more because you kind of have a face to the medication, if that makes sense. You remember the person's situation, so therefore you remember the drug. This might just be me and I might sound crazy, but I think that helps because it kind of links them together instead of having two completely separate things. You're like, oh yeah, that patient who had this wrong with them and then I gave them this oh yeah and then it kind of rejogs your memory so that answers that question I ho think hopefully so I hope er you enjoyed my nursing Q&A and 
literally if you have any questions at all please leave them in the description of this video and I'll do a nursing Q&A in the future. I love doing these videos, I'm no expert whatsoever but I definitely think I can have some um, advice and guidance to give so I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching, see you soon, bye! Really quick, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I'll take that as you want another listen Q&A in the future.